Hey guys, JB here with a commentary exploring the Jardan and the Scourge in Andromeda. Before we go any further, if you have no idea what the Jardan are, then you should absolutely stop watching this video. The nature of this topic has massive spoilers for Andromeda's story. In this video, we'll discuss the Jardan, what we learn towards the end of the game, and what role they may play in the future. The beginning of all of these revelations really starts at Kitasira. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to say it, but this is where we find in this scene the Angaran templates, which are remnant blueprints for creating Angara. We learn that these were never meant to be living specimens, and we also learn that this entire place, or at least this section of it, is an archive to store genetic records and iterations of Angara throughout the creation process. Initially, Jal believes that the Angara were being experimented on, PB believes that they were being helped in some way, and then Sam chimes in and says no, the Angara were actually created by the Jardan, and this is when Jal realizes that, and of course, you know, questions his own existence. It's a really eye-opening moment, and it kind of reminds me of when we first learn about the Protheans, because, you know, it's an ancient race, they did things, they're not here now, we're just picking up the pieces of what they left behind. Let's talk more about the Jardon. So we know that they are a race that inhabited the Helios Cluster hundreds of years ago. And where we get that number from is the Remnant Machines. Early in the game, we can tell that they are three to 400 years old by scanning them with Sam. And he realizes, recognizes immediately, that's how old they are. So since we know the Jardon built the Remnant as well, then we know that they were here around that long ago. And unless they came from another cluster or another galaxy, they had been here for a while because they have all these sophisticated systems in place, planetary engineering, a vault connected network around this cluster. So they have built a lot of stuff here in the Helios cluster. We know that the Jardan created the Remnant Machines and the Angara. And first I want to talk about these Remnant Machines because all of the Remnant that we encounter as far as we know are not sentient. They are programmed to do specific things. As we encounter them in this game, they are either defending things or attacking something on site. And sometimes we can control them with Sam. So the Remnant are not necessarily sentient as far as we know. And then of course we learn that the Jardan created the Angara, who are sentient and they are organic beings, which almost seems more impressive. So the big kicker here is we have no idea why the Jardon created either of these species, if they just wanted to play God or if it was for a specific purpose. The reason behind their creation is unknown at this point. We don't know if there is a sentient version of the Remnant, and part of me wants to believe that the Jardon are that. They are self-aware synthetics, kind of like Geth. But that is pure speculation. However, we know that the Jardan were incredibly sophisticated in their technology. They created planetary engineering across the Helios Cluster, far more advanced than the Initiative or the Ket for that matter. Actually, they're more along the lines of the Protheans or the Reapers. Maybe not the Reapers, they're kind of way out there and their history is far longer. I think that's something also to note. Addison actually says that Remtech is less advanced than Prothean technology, which I don't think is too far of a stretch. I don't think we know enough necessarily but we do know that the activation of remnant technology requires an organic and AI cooperating together, at least what we can see in this game. And that's why Ryder and Sam are able to interact with it, and somebody like the Archon is not, because he doesn't have the AI to help him activate it. So if the only way to truly interact with remnant technology is through AI and organic cooperation, and that's not just a low-level thing that only we can do, you know, maybe the Jardon had their own way of doing things, then it makes me wonder, were the Jardon actually organics? And they had kind of mastered this cooperation between organic and AI and that's how they interacted with everything or were they synthetics who created the Angara so they could actually interact with all of this technology I think those are two likely possibilities now let's shift over to Meridian which is a device that we only begin to understand at the very end of the game Long story short, Meridian is a cluster-wide terraforming control center. This is where all of the vaults spread across many planets in the Helios Cluster are connected to. Further studies at the end of the game reveal that this is a laboratory where they monitored the vault progress on each of these planets and collected so much data that we don't have the technology to actually go through it in a timely manner. At the end of the game, we see that Meridian is a shell world. When we're on the inside, it's just beautiful. It's a spectacle, and it makes me think that this is what the Jardon wanted more most of their terraformed worlds to look like. Also at Key to Sierra, we learned that that station was a part of Meridian, but Meridian itself, the shell, was jettisoned to safety when the Jardan faced a weapon which created the Scourge in whatever conflict they were involved in. 
And that brings us to the Scourge. Once again, the Jardan were involved in some large-scale conflict where the Scourge was deployed as a weapon from a remnant space station, which happens to be key to Sira. So that is the site of the deployment of the Scourge, and that's where it kind of spreads out throughout the cluster. As a result of this event, whether it was shortly before or shortly after or right when it happened, the Jardan left the Helios cluster. So something about deploying this massive weapon in the Helios cluster caused the Jardan to leave. As for the Scourge itself, the initiative really doesn't understand it. It defies their understanding of contemporary science. They call it a dark energy cloud or a charged absence, but in reality, they don't know what it is. We do know that we can harvest element zero from it, but it's difficult because the Scourge itself interferes with technology if you get too close to it. Now think about that. This is a weapon that interferes with technology. That seems very counterintuitive to the remnant machines and the goals of the Jardan since they created the remnant machines so it makes me wonder did the jardan deploy this or did some other race deploy it against them i'm not really sure it could have been a preventative measure if another race tried to utilize their technology against them or was this a zero-sum game situation for the jardan was it something where they were being attacked by some synthetic force and the only way to get rid of them was to deploy the scourge and save some of their own technology was the Scourge a failsafe for the Jardan, or is it a weapon that another race used on the Jardan to make them leave? We don't know. This is all speculation, but I think a good way to think about this is to look at what the Scourge actually does and use that to pinpoint why it was used. Clearly, Andromeda left us with many questions, but I think this is one of the most interesting of them. Of course, we have the Benefactor and the Initiative and all of that, which we talked about before, Sam and the Benefactor, all of that. But this with the Jardan is almost more interesting to me. What were the motivations of the Jardan? Since I've been drawing a lot of comparisons between Andromeda and the original trilogy, for example, with the Ket and the Reapers, that's a video I made a few days ago, I think it's fair to compare the Jardan to the Protheans. They are an ancient alien race that we know nothing about. They're less ancient than the Protheans. I know that's something people are going to point out. They're less ancient, but still, they're not here. And we are picking up the pieces of what they left behind. And whatever decisions they made shaped the place that we are in, just like the Protheans shaped the Milky Way. They were here before, and we are living in a world that they inhabited before. They inevitably impact us, and I think that's definitely the case with the Helios Cluster and the Jardin. The thing is, there's very little evidence, and we don't know enough about them. This is a common theme throughout the original trilogy, and I'm sure it will be in the Andromeda trilogy, or however many games we're going to get. We know the Protheans were organic. I'm not sure if this was a question in the original trilogy, but we just don't know about the Jardan yet. I think it's a good chance that they were either synthetic or organic. You guys can let me know what you think in the comment section below. But if remnant technology requires an organic and an AI to work together, I would lean towards organic, unless they were specifically creating the Angara to use them as the organic side of the AI and organic in order to interact with this technology. I'm also extremely curious about the Scourge. Did the Jardan deploy the Scourge as a preventative measure to defend themselves and protect their own technology? Or did an enemy use it against them and cause them to flee the Helios Cluster? Also, do the Ket play any role in the history of the Jardan? It doesn't seem like it just because of the way that the Archon truly has no idea how to interact with remnant technology whatsoever, but I will remind you that the Ket arrived in the Helios Cluster 75 years ago from the time that the Initiative gets there, so they have been terrorizing the Angara and exalting them for 75 years. And once again, the Jardan left three to 400 years ago as far as we know, so is there any relation between the Jardan and the Ket? Can we connect the dots in any way? I'm not sure that we can right now. And then my final question, at least for this video, because there's tons to speculate about, what was the true purpose of Meridian? And I think we kind of get to it it's that it wanted to create life it wanted to foster life on all these vault worlds connect with one central place it seemed like the jardan had good intentions they wanted to you know support life on all of these planets we know that the jardan built organic and synthetic life although the remnant machines are not sentient but they built organic life in the angara and supported it through the vault network and meridian but why would they do that did they just want to play god as i mentioned before we just don't know there are so many open-ended things left in this game and i truly hope that they explore at least some of this in the DLC.
that's all I have for the Jardon and the Scourge. That's the end of the speculative endless questions. But of course, we're opening it up to everyone. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. What do you think the Jardon's true intentions are? Meridian, the Scourge, Kitasira, the weapon deployed, the Ket, maybe a connection there. Let me know what you're thinking because there are many questions at the end of this game and lots of things to be answered. So I'd love to hear what you think in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for a few more Andromeda commentaries and any updates and patches, new content, DLC, whatever it may be. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.